We're back, people, and today we're breaking down film on the Miami Dolphins offense versus the Jets. Obviously, not pretty at all from the offense, especially with Skylar Thompson at quarterback. They really need Tua back to have a chance in this game versus Buffalo. But I do have to give credit to the offense in one area. Their running game was really successful, which led to a very high time of possession. They really won the time of possession battle, which they usually don't win. And that allowed the defense to stay pretty fresh throughout the game. They looked like they were playing hard, fast the whole time. And the offense was on the field a lot, running the ball successfully. So got to give credit there where credit is due. And we're going to start off with this first fourth down play here for the Dolphins. Mike McDaniel remained aggressive in this game. These like fourth and five, that was fourth and medium areas. Once he got past midfield, he kept going for him. And, you know, it worked the next time when he did a run play. We'll definitely get to that one, the one to Jeff Wilson. This one doesn't work. Personally, I would have punted it just early in this game just because the field position battle was such an important part of this game. But he goes for it. And honestly, like it should have been a completion here to Tyreek. Skyler just doesn't recognize where he's supposed to go with the ball. And because pre-snap, here's what he's seeing. He's seeing a split field safety look with the linebacker gaining some depth. This looks like it's going to be Tampa 2 just pre-snap. And uh, post-snap right here, one of the guys who's lined up on the line of scrimmage drops into the throwing lane of where he wants to go to the ball with Waddle. But if he's just looking pre-snap, he knows Tyreek Hill is just going to run into this zone just based on his route. And there's all this room here. And if he just peeks over here, knowing pre-snap that this is going to be wide open, but he just doesn't have that feel, that natural ability. He's just a seventh round rookie. It's so hard to expect a lot out of him. And then he just tries to go to Waddle. And this is like one of the only scenarios where Tyreek Hill wasn't his first read. Because he went to Waddle on this one and Waddle's route was dead. But throughout the rest of the game, Waddle was cooking the corners on the Jets. But he kept looking at Tyreek and Tyreek was hurt, hobbled. And Waddle actually was going to have a really good game. But he didn't get the opportunities that he needed. All of Skylar Thompson's most impressive plays came of him just creating out of the pocket using his legs. I Like I said last week in the film breakdowns, I really wanted Skylar to run the ball more. He didn't take off and just run immediately, which I would have liked to seen if his first read wasn't there, or like just run, get out of the pocket, create with your legs, and then throw the ball. But when he did do it, it worked. Like right here, he just gets some pressure on him in the pocket. The O-line did struggle, so you, like I just I don't understand the hate on Skyler. I wasn't expecting too much from him. Like he's a seventh round rookie. Um, the O-line was beat up in this game. Tyree Kill got hurt. Jalen Waddle got hurt at the end of the game. Obviously, would like to see him probably throw with a little more. And this offense is very anticipation, very timing based. And the ball is probably supposed to be out here to waddle, but the pressure comes on him quickly. So he escapes the pocket, gives time with his legs, and throws a pretty nice ball to Tyreek, you know, in the scramble drill. So this offense really needs to a back because I know a lot of people think this is a QB friendly offense, but that just has not been the case all year long because every time another QB has come in, the offense has really, really struggled. Even in Tua's worst games, they're still putting up a lot more points than they would put up with Teddy or Skyler at quarterback. Running game was effective with Moster. It was effective with Wilson. They do like the behind the back uh, run here, you know, where he hands it off out of shotgun. He turns around. They do this. Mostly they used to just been doing play action out of this recently. But in this game, they decided to run it a few times. It worked early. It kind of didn't work once late, and then they went away from it because the Jets started to expect it, but it's a really nice setup concept. You get Smythe lined up as like basically a receiver with his split here, and he gets to crack down on the edge, and then you get Alec angled out to lead, and Wilson does a good job of just making a couple guys miss, miss good uh, good hit movement there. He's got some nice stop-start ability. I think one area, though, is Jeff Wilson hasn't looked as explosive since his hip injury to the Chargers, and if Mostert doesn't play next week, they're going to be in some... <laughs> in some problems because Moster went off versus the Bills last time. Another pretty big play for the Dolphins offense. They didn't have too many in this game, so I just want to showcase the ones they did have. This is an impressive play by Skyler to stand and, and take this hit while delivering this ball. Like, he steps into this. He's going to get destroyed right there, and he delivers this nice to Durham Smythe. Give him a chance. Put it on his back shoulder away from Sauce. The Jets are running quarters here, and look at the effect Waddle has on a defense. Waddle takes a nice, like, inside path. On his uh on his release here and he attacks the safety but he sauce really squeezes this and waddle's route does bend back to the outside and basically the read here is sauce if sauce squeezes this out breaker to waddle but it still sits down on the middle of the field you throw it 
to Smythe here. But if Sauce maintains the outside, you get Waddle in a nice open area. So this is a nice concept to attack Sauce in a quarters look because the Jets do run a lot of quarters. And Durham Smythe makes a pretty big time play. I think Skyler definitely favors tight ends. Uh, a lot of his biggest plays were throwing to tight ends in these past two games. Here's one of those areas where Skyler just gets locked on Tyreek the whole time. His eyes just stick there the whole time. Uh, this is one of the plays that was like trending on Twitter of Sauce holding. It's just, you know, the all 22 version of it. Um, Sauce did hold a few times throughout this game. I think this one was, you probably could have called a hold, but it would have been a pretty weak call. Usually when they're holding, it's uh, more like when they're changing direction. This when he gets maybe a little grip of Tyreek Hill's jersey, they're both just running vertically. It doesn't really change anything. But I would like to see basically the main problem of this play is he gets locked on Tyreek. He was struggling to get through his progressions. But if you look at Waddle on the other side of the field, like he shouldn't have gone. Tyreek is facing a press look here. Once, you know, Tyreek takes this inside path, like this route is pretty dead for Sauce. He needs to snap to, you know, his second read. But look at Waddle at the top here. Just smoking DJ Reed. If he gets an off look like this and they're getting man-to-man -man coverage, that's a, such a good route from Jalen Waddle. He's just such a good job of changing up his leverage. His pace variation is very impressive. He gives a slight nod to the inside and then restacks the corner vertically. And then he's just so explosive out of his break. He's able to accelerate like crazy and then decelerate to sink those hips and get out. And he would have been, you know, open if Skyler was looking to that side of the field. Third and one situation, Dolphins O-line was bullying in the run game. They were pretty bad pass blocking, but the two times they faced the Jets this season, they kind of bullied them up front in the running game. Mostert had a big game. Wilson had a solid game. Um, good run here by Wilson. He, Like I said earlier, he just doesn't look as explosive to me since the injury, but he still has good vision, so he's going to be important next week if Mostert doesn't play. Um, I would like to see a, maybe a three-man rotation because Savon Ahmed, in his limited work this season, has looked pretty good and like I think if you get Gaskin in there as like a receiver out of the backfield Savon Ahmed they have fresh legs Wilson Mostert are banged up I think if you get some fresh leg running backs in there they could have a big impact in this game because running game the running game is going to be so important versus Buffalo I know Jalen Waddle didn't really have a big stat line but he was having a great game in my opinion like he looked good against Sauce right here he gets a completion good job by Skyler getting outside of the pocket creating and I don't know what it is, but like Waddle looks just more comfortable as the season got on. Like he's been great all season. He's had like one, two games, like the Vikings game. He struggled with like the fumble, the drops, but he's looked even more explosive, more comfortable in his routes here. He just takes that inside release. And you know, for a smaller guy, he shows some nice physicality here versus Sauce. Just look at him. He hits the hard inside dive release, then restacks vertically, gets on top of Sauce quickly. I don't think he expected him to accelerate like that and then works through the hold this time and Skyler is on the same page with Waddle throws the ball with good timing while he's on the move and then they get the completion they also got the holding penalty called too so Waddle gets the completion and the holding call versus Sauce he actually when he did line up against Sauce I feel like he had actually a pretty good game this time around this play not really too much anything crazy here just a standard jet sweep to Jalen Waddle he picks up nine yards um just wanted to show this just because of what I think McDaniel is going to need to do next week if Tua plays or not like regardless of that but I think if it, especially if he doesn't play getting the ball into Waddle and Hill's hands and plays like this because Waddle and Hill have been in motion a lot this season and this is like what the fourth or fifth time they've handed the actually handed the ball off to Waddle or Hill thinking you know they've probably been in motion almost a thousand times they've gotten it only four or five times like teams are not respecting it anymore I think you got to start giving them the ball, make them respect that, and then that will open up the running game even more, and it just allows you know you to get the ball into your best player's hands. And then at this point in the game, Raheem Mostert just turned into Marshawn Lynch again. Like Mostert has kind of like it's been interesting this year. I feel like early on he was kind of hesitant, maybe didn't want to get injured. I know he's had the injury history, and I just feel like he wasn't as decisive. But these last few games, he's just been a different monster good vision here getting you know the split zone look bringing you know this guy across and the fullback who's lined up in a split back look Mostert hesitates allows Williams to get to this linebacker just enough and he just drops that shoulder versus the safety runs him over he's been showing some great play strength some contact balance great squaring people up lowering the shoulder reducing the surface area and then you know using that 
collision to regain his balance. It's really impressive play for Mostert. I just love the effort he's been playing with. And hopefully, hopefully he can play because he was a huge factor in the last Bills game. Back-to-back -back impressive runs from Mostert, this time on our center. And they get like a really creative play call here. They're in a, you know, ISO look. They motion angled pre-snap to move, you know, get the eyes. They let 94 sort of shoot up field. They have Robert Hunt pulling across. They get this counter look, but go away from the motioning fullback. And then he cuts this back. It just gets all this space created right here. This beautiful play call. 94 shoots up field. Nine is forced to, you know, go over here, take on Ingold. They fill up. 57 now is seeing that the counter is coming. They see the pulling old lineman. So this takes these two linebackers out of the play here. Mostert presses up and then cuts back to the space, runs through some tackles. So really nice play call. Good vision there from Mostert to see that hole open up on the backside. Third and five situation. Skyler gets a cover one look here. Nothing's really open and he gets pressured instantly. I don't really blame him too much. There was nothing really where to go with this ball. Everything was locked up. He wanted to go to Tyreek, but he gets pressured too quickly. And he does a good job of throwing this ball away. If I got to give credit to Skylar for something in this game, is he didn't allow himself to be the reason they lost. He threw the ball away when he needed to. He didn't take a bunch of negative plays. Um, and he didn't force the ball in for any interceptions. Like, Teddy played better overall last week than Skylar played in this week. But that interception that got returned for a touchdown was a reason why they lost to the Patriots. And Skyler just didn't take those chances. So you got to give credit to Skyler there. Obviously, the offense needs to, you know, not play that way versus the Bills because that offense is just way too explosive to, you know, play conservative like this. And the very next play, Mike McDaniel comes out with one of the ballsiest play calls. You'll see a run on fourth and five. The pitch, I mean, he got the look that he wanted and they went for it. I love, <laughs> I love the aggressiveness McDaniel plays with. He gets Craycraft a line tight here so he can crack back on this and then it will basically be you know the pulling alignment and you know trent Sherfield on this motion they have the numbers advantage and it's basically just robert hunt go out to get the the linebacker you have shell out in space all this room Sherfield takes on gardner you just have the numbers advantage to this side and jeff wilson gets an easy first down running on fourth and five love the aggressive this aggressiveness there from mcdaniel then mcdaniel goes into his bag again this time gets the reverse end around look to Mostert. Love this play call. Um, he had two back-to-back -back great play calls. And then I'll show the next play, which uh, he tried to, you know, keep getting too cute with it. And then that kind of ruined the drive. But this play call right here, beautifully executed. Get Mostert around. They motion Craycraft across. Have this fake to Jeff Wilson. They also have an O-lineman pulling to this side. It just has all this misdirection. These linebackers are lost safeties they're all moving the wrong way and then they just have this beautifully blocked out in space Mostert destroys another safety like he is running with a purpose it's really nice to see and you know after you run that they try to just do the jet sweep to Mostert to the other side of the field but now they're kind of expecting it they're seeing the motion they know what's coming and it just gets stopped in its tracks basically these two tight ends right here they're actually want 91 to shoot a field people like I know that on the broadcast they were saying like they missed their assignment, but they kind of want him to shoot up field, be stopped by the, see the running back and sort of get moved away. But they just shoot up field and are expecting it to go to the running back this time. This is where I wouldn't have gotten cute after, you know, all those plays worked. You got to go back to what's working. You can't keep running those, you know, reverses, just jet sweeps, especially once you get down inside the red zone, because those plays can easily be a huge loss like this one where they lose 11 yards and then that takes away which could have been one of their only touchdown drives one of the weirdest luckiest plays i've ever seen the dolphins get is <laughs> skylar getting his arm hit and with he was trying to chuck this ball to tyreek like i'm very sure he was trying to do this like look at his angle of his shoulder he is trying to throw this ball deep to tyreek hill he's not looking at Kiseki. Like, for him to throw this to Gusecki, he would have been thrown in with a bunch of anticipation. And he hasn't really thrown with anticipation all game long. And he's trying to chuck this ball, but his arm gets hit. And it just sort of flutters, ducks, and lands perfectly into Gusecki's hands. Mike Gusecki makes a great play here, winning at the contested catch point. Um, just one of the luckiest plays I've ever seen the Dolphins get. Like, this was for sure 
being trying to chuck this deep to Tyreek Hill. Um, just based on where his eyes were, the arm, you can see he's not looking at Gaseki right here. Gaseki is right there. His eyes are all the way out deep up towards the top where Tyreek Hill would be, and it just ends up floating to Gaseki off the arm hit. So, really fortunate scenario for the Dolphins just to flip field position. This is the final drive of the game, and they really start to get Jalen Waddle involved two plays in a row. They hit him over the middle of the field. Skyler, good job with the ball placement here. He's under pressure. And he just throws this. He steps up in the pocket, getting hit. And he puts this, like he's got two guys on him. And he puts it where Waddle can work back towards the ball. And the DBs have no chance to make a play. And great work by Waddle getting this, getting back up, even almost getting another, you know, extra yard out of it. But great, just really great work getting back towards the ball. Like when you have receivers that are this explosive, if you throw it to a certain spot, like the DBs have no chance to make a play on the ball. The receivers can always work back towards it. And this was a huge first down pickup on second and eight. And then two plays later, this kind of is the play that gives them a chance right here. Like, obviously, it's only a two-yard gain to Waddle, but he, they get the horse collar. Just his ability to be so explosive and change just enough of his speed here, get somehow get to the outside from his position here, that this linebacker feels that he needs to horse collar. Because if he doesn't horse collar, Waddle probably does get, you know, an extra few yards. But it only ends up being two because he does get horse collared. And that's kind of the difference in the game because it puts them almost into field position. Uh, Waddle does get hurt on this play, unfortunately. Um, but that was a huge, huge mistake by the Jets. And just Waddle's explosiveness allowed that play to happen. Last play that I'm going to break down. Dolphins, 38-yard line. It's the second to last play they ran. But this is the Savon Ahmed run that just puts them into field goal range. A nice 7-yard run. That's why I want to see more Ahmed next week, especially if most doesn't play. Uh, he actually had a pretty good game against the Bills last time too. Like he had that touchdown run and he had a lot of decent like seven, eight yard runs. But right here, you can just see how quick his feet are. He has some nice burst. He just has fresh legs that this offense really, really needs badly. Sometimes, you know, running back is one of those positions where guys who are third or fourth on the depth chart can still make a difference because they're still talented and just having fresh legs at that position is so huge. Ahmed isn't really you know a starter basically because he doesn't have the greatest vision but when he does see it he has those quick feet the burst the fluidity gets through this hole and it just was a huge gain to make this a much more you know, kickable ball for jason sanders shout out jason sanders by the way stepping up making this game winner this offense really struggled to finish they had some positive plays in this game i showed a lot of their positive plays um a lot of the negatives were just pretty basic stuff just runs being stopped when runs were stopped on first down this offense basically stalled on the field um that's why Tua is so important it just Tua not being in the game takes away their big playability because they have so many they always have like one of those touchdowns a game where it'd just be a big time chuck up to Tyreek Hill or Jalen Waddle or a big you know yard after catch from one of them and they get a touchdown but when Tua has been out they haven't gone that and they're just having a struggle scoring the ball so if you guys enjoy this video make sure to like comment and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time peace